The SAT, the new SAT, really likes this shape, this, this image of the two parallel lines being cut by a transversal. So we've seen this question on easier tests, easier modules, where all you have to do is know the rules. What is equal, what is congruent, versus what is supplementary and adds to 180. We still need that here, but now we have the algebra is also part of it. So what you need to recognize is the two uh, pieces that they give us, the X and the Y, those are congruent, right? They're vertical angles, so they're gonna be equal to each other. So in order to know what Z is, we're first gonna need to know what these angles are, and we have to solve using that, uh, some, some algebra here. So I'm gonna set these two things equal to each other, X, is gonna equal y, so 6k plus 13 is equal to 8k minus 29. Um, you can do this with the calculator, but I think it's actually faster just to do the normal algebra here, so minus 6k, add 29, this goes away, this goes away, this gets me 2k, and 13 plus 29, 13 plus 29 is 42, so if I divide by two, I get that k is 21. Now be careful, that's the trap, that's the trap. You see kind of like an X equals, a K equals, and your brain goes, ah, solved. Mystery. Uh, I solved the question. Done. Over. Math accomplished. But you got to be careful. Sometimes the SAT wants that. Sometimes it wants something different. And they're always going to put it as an answer choice trying to get you uh, just to, you know, on this little trap because they know that you're kind of eager to move quickly. So you just got to be careful. What they really want is the value of Z. So we need to get this angle here. And we can get that because it is... It is, <clears throat> how can I show this? This Z is equivalent to this angle here, right? These are what are known as alternate interior angles. Um, this is probably the most important thing that you learn when you learn this shape in geometry class is how that Z shape kind of forms and gives us some congruent angles. So what we need to get that is the value of either X or Y because X and Y are supplementary to this, meaning they add to 180. So let's just go back to one of these equations. I'm gonna pick the Y equation. Uh, actually, let's pick the X equation because there's no minus. So that means X is six times, we said K is 21 plus 13. So I'm just gonna get my regular calculator. Six times 21 is 126 plus 13 is, oh, darn it, 126 plus 13 is 139. So that is the value of X. And notice another trap, right? Right, it's another answer, but we don't want that. We want to get, if this is 139, then Z is going to be supplementary to that. So we just take 180 and we minus the 139. 180 minus 139 is 41. And that finally is the answer. So in a way, this is definitely much harder than a lot of the other versions of this question that we've seen or that I've seen. Um, and uh, that's because there's just, there's more intermediate steps, right? We're still doing the same rules. We still need to understand what's congruent, what's supplementary, how we move from kind of like angles on the bottom to angles on the top. Those are all things that are just part of this shape, but they, they let us do that now with some added pieces. But that, that's just more tedious. It's not necessarily harder, right? There's no, it's not harder math. It's not more complex math. It's just there's more steps to get to that answer. So don't let something like this panic you. If you understand it when it's simple, when it's complicated, it's just following those exact same rules. Just be careful that with any geometry question, you're always aware of what they're asking for. They very often do this, where with geometry, they, there's something that you solve for but then there's also something different that they want you to be the answer. So, so just be careful that if those don't overlap, that you're not just picking the first number that kind of pops out of an equation, that you're actually thinking about what they want and you're doing whatever extra steps you need to get there.